I got to get some beekeeping done so that when Mr. Paul Otis tells me in my live show or asks me in my live show, how are the bees, I can actually tell him because I know because I did it the day before. People have been telling me that my comb is too dark. Now, I don't know if it's really bad for the bees to have dark comb in the hives, but maybe it is. Enough people think it is. I did a little reading and I found out that you can put this dark comb down in the burner, the smoker, and it keeps the fire lit longer and maybe tricks the bees into believing that their hive is actually on fire and they react better or worse. I don't know. But I'm trying it this time. We're going to try again this time to use the nitro gloves. I liked having the dexterity last time, so we're going to give it a shot. Enough people have said that bees can sting through these, so I believe they probably can. But we're going to still try it out. Maybe it'll make me a better beekeeper like some people suggest, giving me a little more um, touch, you know, making me a little more intimate with the bees because I will be able to feel them a little better. I don't think these are the 5 or 6 mil heavy duty gloves. I think these are 4 mil, so they're probably not ideal for this type of situation, but we're going to still try it out. This will be the second time. It does feel good. One thing to be very mindful of, at least out here in South Texas where it's very hot and dry in July, is that your smoker is actually a hazard to the environment because you potentially could light a grass fire or a wildfire. So we have to be very careful about where we set this down and how we use it. I'm going to leave most of the equipment on the cart until we go assess the situation and see what we need and then we'll come back and get different hive bodies or whatever as needed. But I don't think we're going to need a whole lot today. I got my tool. I got my smoker. I think that's enough to get started. What is the goal today? Well, the goal is to see how these two bigger hives are doing. Actually, all three of these hives, but I think that we might need to make some adjustments with these two bigger hives, especially the one down here that is just double nuked. And uh, maybe we'll put that in a full-size hive today. Let's check this one out first. I'm not sure how, what kind of growth or what kind of building there has been in here. Actually, it doesn't look like a whole lot, so we may be able to leave this one alone. Looks like they might have done just a little bit of building of wax comb on here, not much. Let me take this middle one out. I was hoping to be able to see eggs, if there are any. Okay, it looks like they are mostly not doing anything up here in this second box. They're pretty happy down in the bottom, down there. there there's not a whole lot going on up in this upper box yet. So not a lot needed done there. We're just gonna button this one up and leave them alone. And we can check this other hive. Very good, now this the second hive, if you remember, this is from the split. And last time we looked, it was doing very well. They were building a lot of comb, putting a lot of honey up in this second box. So let's see how they're doing this time. For everyone who is a fan of Mama Curbs being the beekeeping camera lady, um, she really wanted to this time, or actually I really wanted her this this time, but uh, she had other responsibilities, getting kids and animals to the appointments necessary to uh, for their well-being. So this time it's just me and the camera again. We still do want to assess the beetles, the beetle trap. You can see this towel right here has caught quite a few. It looks like they got trapped and actually died in there, which is a very good thing. That's that's a very good sign. Those beetles will no longer, they are building a lot of comb. That's a lot of honey right there. That's a lot of honey. I'm gonna try this time scooting this, this full frame. It's not full, but it's got a lot of honey on it. It would have been number four. I'm going to scoot it over one place and put this empty one that was in position number three. Slide it in between three and four now, or five to make it number four. And then I think maybe on the other side we'll do the same thing. So let's see. 
These bees look fine. They're doing most of their work down in the bottom box. They are building a lot. They have a little bit of honey and comb built on this one, but this one's mostly empty. And again, the fourth one from this other end. Building a lot of honey on that. A lot of honey. So we're going to hopefully increase production just a tiny little bit. Hopefully it doesn't mess them up. But those bees look good down in there. There's plenty of bees. They look like they're doing their work. I don't think it's necessary for me to get in there and disturb them. Actually, I think I will. I think I'm going to go ahead and take this top box off just so I can observe what's going on down there. Make sure there's, make sure there's brood and everything necessary. It looks really full, really full. In fact, I'm going to disrupt a lot of this honey that's going on here by checking on it, but I do want to see what's going on in the middle of this hive. I'm going to take this end frame out first because it's the most empty. Do they have some honey on the end of that? There are some beetles. So there are towels in here, but there's still there's still beetles going on in the bottom of this. I'll probably put some more towels on the bottom of this one. Yeah, we definitely ha still have a beetle problem. There's uh, some uncapped honey here, along with lots of capped honey. Look how they're bowing that out. Look how full that is. And you see how it's bowing out from the... They're lifting it off the surface, way off the surface. I'm just going to scoot these over so I can get in there and see one of these middle ones. And this is the one, the medium one, that had the extra frame or comb being built on the bottom. I do see some larva. Huh. I don't see any capped larva. Let me get another frame. This is actually not looking as good as I thought it should. There's not as many bees as I was hoping. I do see larva down in there. I'm really hoping to see some eggs. I see some really tiny larva. There's a lot of really tiny larva here. My eyes are not really good for seeing eggs. I think I see some eggs, but I'm not positive. There's not a lot of bees. I feel like there should be more bees. Or maybe they just reduce their numbers in the summer. I think I heard that somewhere. Okay, their, their bee numbers is a lot smaller than I thought. Maybe they swarmed. Or maybe they're just, I don't know, reducing for the summer. I'm going to look again here in the middle. God. Just got stung through the glove. I didn't see my queen yet. I hope she's here. I don't see any queen cells being built. Now I need to decide what I'm gonna do here I know I need to put more towels in here for the beetles I'm pretty certain I need to take this top box off because they have they don't have enough bees to take care of all that real estate they have plenty of honey down in the bottom box so I don't think they need this the honey that they put up top so now that we're in a dearth which is um, Basically a low food supply, the pollen and nectar is not as prevalent because it's so dry and hot. I think I'm going to reduce the hive. I'll put one old towel on and put another fresh towel.
We're going to try to convince most of these bees out of here to go right back down into this bottom box. these towels back in. Oh, we're just going to take a peek in that smaller, the, the one nuke the one that was struggling, has been struggling for a while. I don't know if they're still holding on, but we'll see. They're gone. Completely empty. Robbed out. You can even see there's beetles and moths hanging out in there. That line right there, that's from a wax moth tunneling through. You can see more wax moth tunneling through right there. You can see it, even see a wax moth running around on that one. So this hive is dead. Those frames those frames need to be put in the freezer for a few days to make sure all of the bugs are dead before I can recycle those frames to use for bees. It's always sad to lose a hive, but that one's been declining for a long time. I think they were just not fit to survive. So I'm gonna go peek in hives four, five, and six just to see if they're maintaining. Here's hive number four. Beetles are still a problem. The towels definitely caught a few beetles. So I think they're worth using. They're just not catching all of them. So the condition of this hive, just from the top, it looks like they are continuing to build honey. That's a lot of good honey right there. I did put some empty frames up in the top of this one last time we were out here. And there's still some empty spots. Like this one here. This one was completely empty. That side's still mostly empty. This side they're building on. I do see lots and lots of bees down in the bottom of this one. my queen excluder there. I want to see if there's any brood in this third box. I might try to move that queen excluder down one box. Ultimately, the queen excluder is going to be above the second box. Alright, this is the middle frame and all I see is honey. I don't see any brood, so I think it would be safe for me to Put the queen excluder above the second box. I'm going to be cutting a lot of comb because they're breaking wax. They're connecting wax and comb between those two layers. It's getting very hot out here. It's July, the middle of July in South Texas. When you're all wrapped up in a bee suit, there is a risk of overheating. And I feel myself getting really warm. So I'm going to try to take a few of these frames off of high four. And I'm just going to leave five and six alone because I just don't feel like I want to be out here and risk heat stroke or heat exhaustion. So I'm going to take some of these out so I can put some empty frames in to give them a little room. And then button it up and try to come out, come out another day. Mm -hmm. 
so hot my camera is not uh, staying stood up. It's hot. I wanted to get more done. But sometimes you just got to listen to your body and say, okay, I can get something accomplished and fall over in the field, or I can go rest and get a break and come back either later today or tomorrow and hopefully stay alive and keep the bees safe as well. What did we learn this time? Well, we did learn the bees can sting through these gloves. These, I think, are four mil. I will be ordering some five or six mil gloves to see if it makes any difference. But for now, we know that the bees can sting through the gloves, as many of you have already said. But in my experience, uh, today was the first time. Of course, this is only the second time I've worn the gloves. Also, we learned that the, the swarm and the split are reducing, uh, maybe swarmed off or maybe just reducing in the summer. Maybe they don't have enough food. I don't really know about that. I'm going to have to talk to some local beekeepers and see what they're experiencing with their young hives. The three hives on the end, the four, five, and six, of course, I did, today I didn't open five and six, but I listened and it sounded like lots of bees were in there. So I'm hoping they are. Hive number four looks fantastic. It seems that the more mature hives are doing better and the less mature hives are struggling a little bit to stay alive and I think that's typical a lot of people say that a um, a strong hive is one that can survive I don't know if that's a poem but otherwise a young immature hive or a weak hive they're susceptible to too many things so I think uh, my split and my swarm even though they appear to be doing okay, the, the numbers in the, in the split were really small. I didn't see a queen, but I also didn't see any queen cells or queen cups. Um, I did see lots of larvae. I think I saw eggs, but I'm not certain. If I saw eggs, that means there has been a queen there within the last three days. If I didn't see... Uh, um, if I didn't see eggs, then I definitely saw very, very young larvae. So maybe a queen has been there in the last four or five or six days. Hopefully she's still in there, but we'll see. Right now I got to go get some water and in the shade because I am just beat. I don't complain about the heat because I would rather be hot than cold. That's just my nature. But in July, in Texas, July and August, when it's 100 degrees for a month in a row with n either no rain or very little rain, it is uh, hard on everybody and everything. Nature tends to just dry out and shut down. Uh, it's good. It's, that, it's not good for the bees. It's not good for anybody, actually. But, you know, this is just a season that we have to get through. Thank you so much for joining me on this beekeeping episode on the Daddy Curbs Farm. It is a lot of fun sharing this journey with you. If you have not yet subscribed, go ahead and hit subscribe so you can be updated and have notification in your inbox about my next and upcoming videos. Also, if you give me a thumbs up, that lets YouTube know that you appreciate what's going on here on the Daddy Curbs Farm. I hope to see you on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Central for my live show. That way we can have a little bit more uh a little bit more of an intimate conversation that way we can relate a little closer you can talk to me and ask questions and i can get to know who you are thanks again i'll talk to you soon